Do you ever have that feeling that you just have to visit a certain place? No matter how difficult the journey may be, something just pulls you there. Well, the place we're heading today is exactly that for us. And to get there, we have to cross three separate militarized checkpoints and get stamped into a country that as far as the rest of the world's concerned, doesn't exist. Transnistria is an unrecognized breakaway state sandwiched between the countries of Moldova and Ukraine. After the messy collapse of the USSR, this thin stretch of land, populated by mainly Russian speakers, declared its independence from the newly formed, mainly Romanian-speaking Moldova. This resulted in a two-year bloody civil war, costing hundreds of lives, before a fragile peace treaty was signed in 1992. The peace has been maintained here ever since, and despite zero international recognition, Transnistria, for all intents and purposes, operates as a completely separate state. This small country, officially inside another country, is often dubbed the last bastion of the Soviet Union. And life here, its people, and an array of Soviet symbols have fascinated Julia and I for as long as we can remember. So, on that note, let's hop off this marshutka and explore the country of Transnistria. Let's see one by sure. <sighs> Welcome to Tiraspol. It honestly feels so strange to finally be here. We wanted to come here for so, so long. And yeah, to finally be here and to be in and amongst it is just amazing. It's so interesting, so different to just 55 kilometers away in Kishinev. Yeah, like a totally different world but so close. So we just checked into our apartment here in Tiraspol and let's give you a little tour around. This is the kitchen area. Let's move through to the old bathroom, washing machine. And the lounge. It's actually a great apartment, to be fair. Really, really nice, really comfortable. And we're right in the center of Tiraspol. And we just spent the last hour or so talking to the host, Ina, who was really, really nice. And we're hoping later on we're gonna be able to meet up with her and take a bit of a walk around Tiraspol. But for now, should we hop in the shower quickly? A bit of a wash? Cool. A <laughs> bit Just a bit of a wash. Just a bit of a wash, yeah, not, not a full wash, just one armpit. <laughs> See you in a bit. get SIM card. Well, exchange money first and then get the SIM card. Let's do it. So on that note, here in Transnistria or Prydnastrovia, you can't use your international bank cards. So any bank cards that are Visa or MasterCard, in most places you can't use. So you need to either bring cash with you or exchange whatever foreign cash you have. So we've brought euros with us and we're going to go to an exchange office now and exchange it into the Pridnastrovian ruble. Um, and it should be about 17 rubles to the euro. So let's see what we get. Seventeen point three. That's pretty good. First, um, у нас пятьдесят евро. Well, that was pretty easy. <laughs> we literally walked around the corner and there was a bank. Let's have a look at the money. Oh, that's a nice one. I like the purple. And they made ink. <laughs> Save it on you. So actually about the coins, apparently they've been taken out of circulation now. 
but here in Transnistria they used to give out plastic coins now it looks like they're, they're metal isn't it but you can still buy the plastic coins in like souvenir shops and even in the bank it seems like there's like a commemorative yeah. thing to take with you and uh, yeah I think let's try if we can find them let's yeah, definitely, let's definitely yeah. bring some That's a hell of a souvenir so it seems like the process of getting a sim card here is a little bit more difficult than the process of changing money you might need uh, like um, to be registered in a yeah registered in an address and um, to have your passport and everything but we just spoke to a guy just outside one of the other shops that was closed and he's told us where to go and yeah oh, let's go have a look <laughs> Three today. <laughs> oh my god. No SIM card for us, I guess. Nope. So after an unsuccessful SIM card attempt yesterday, we're gonna see if we can sort it out this morning before heading deeper into the center of Tiraspol and having a little look around. What's crazy about this place is it is so different to anywhere else we've been. It's incredible, it's so hard to get your head around that it's got its own passport tax system, license plates, money, flag, everything a functioning state needs. But 99.9% .9 of the world doesn't even know it exists. So something that many Europeans might know Pridnastrovia for, Transnistria for, is the football team Sheriff Tiraspol, which in the last couple of seasons have actually been in the Champions League, which for those that don't know is like the European Cup for all the best teams all around Europe. And actually last season they beat Real Madrid in Spain. Real Madrid are one of the best teams in the world on paper. So it was an absolutely incredible achievement. And I think the whole country was just going mental for what happened. And Sheriff actually is a very big company here in Prydnastrovia. And as well as the football team, they also own a lot of supermarkets that we've seen a lot as we've been walking around the city. If I did know where I was, I would think that we're in some region of Russia because it's crazy how many similarities there are from architecture to people. It feels like home from home. It does. <laughs> are you getting all homesick? <laughs> One thing of note about Transnistria compared to some of the other frozen conflicts across the ex-Soviet space is Transnistria is not actually internationally recognized by any other country, not even by Russia, who for example recognizes Abkhazia and South Ossetia, two other unrecognized states. And actually Transnistria is only recognized by three other unrecognized states, and that is Abkhazia, South Ossetia and Nagorno-Karabakh, all in the Caucasus region. Other than that, it's always thought of internationally as a part of Moldova. The amount of Soviet symbols here is actually crazy. We used to see like hammer and sickle and statues of Lenin and Russia everywhere. But here is just on another level. One thing to note though, Transnistria is not communist and it's more about nostalgia and remembering your history rather than the economic system in the country.
As you may know, we're getting postcards from different parts of the world and sending them to our Patreons. And I mean, what a better place to do it rather than Transnistria. So let's go and try and get them at the post office. Здравствуйте. А можно открыть их, купить, пожалуйста? А, Дом это... Советов. Дом Советов, который с Лениным. Да. да, да. Спасибо а, большое. Скажите, пожалуйста, а можно марки у вас еще купить? Ну, куда? Куда? А, у? Местные америкские марки. Просто на сувенир мы просто да. хотим несколько купить. Америкские? Да. О. А сколько, сколько штук стоит? Это 6.15. Они все разные. Все разные? Можно таких тоже две, пожалуйста? Две такие. Да. Да. Спасибо вам большое. Спасибо большое. До свидания. Спасибо, до свидания. That's awesome. We can actually send them from here, so let's do it tonight and then send them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I often look at places like this, yeah, and I wonder, the people that built this Lenin statue, if these people that lived at that period of time could see how the world looks right now, what would they say? Like, Do you know what I'm wondering? Is that you said that how people who are building all these monuments and stuff. Yeah. I'm often thinking about people that are live together in one country and were fighting in the war together for one country yeah. and against, you know, something that was really terrible if they were alive now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the amount of wars that have broken out across the former Soviet Union, like you say, and people that used to be brothers in arms and they used to go to work together, they used to be yeah. neighbours. And... and everyone was considered as, you know, part of one. It wasn't, everyone was ours. Everyone is familiar. Everyone is a friend. Everyone is almost like a family, you know? I think the, the scariest thing is the speed at which all of that collapsed and turned to hatred, you know, in many parts That's of- That's the thing, yeah. In here, right, especially, the war broke out between the new Moldovan Republic and mm. the people here in Transnistria. And just the speed at, like, at which that must have changed is just, mind-blowing and really saddening isn't it you know what a friend of mine sent me something recently and i think i've told you about it there was an experiment apparently and they put red ants and black ants in one jar and they were just doing their own thing you know getting on with their life just being normal and then someone shook the jar and then the red and the black ants started killing each other started fighting so who is the bad and the good guy there. The bad guy is the one that shook the jar, not the ones that are inside of it. I think the main sort of takeaway for me from Transnistria is just a reminder of how many wounds that have been left behind from the crumbling of the Soviet Union, and how many different nationalities lived under one system in one country effectively, and just the speed at which it fell apart and so many different ethnicities all of a sudden were pitted against each other and 
overnight found themselves effectively in foreign countries. I think we can often look at things as very binary, you know, like in the case of the Soviet Union, it broke up and these new countries were born. But inside these new countries, there were so many different groups of people living among each other that were suddenly governed by a totally different system. The country they knew was gone overnight. And I think nowhere is it more evident than somewhere like Transnistria. And a reminder of the absolute heartbreaking bloodshed there was here in the early 90s and how quickly that came about. There is a memorial to the tragedy that happened in Chernobyl as well. So there is Chernobyl, Second World War, Afghan War, and the most recent one. Okay, it started to rain and it's getting a bit chilly. Let's go and get some food and for that we need to head back into USSR. We ordered our favorite dish to share, which is called herring under the fur coat. It's a layered salad composed of diced pickled herring covered with layers of grated boiled eggs, potatoes, carrots, beetroots and mayonnaise. We also ordered a borscht soup each to warm ourselves up. Cheers. See you later. We just got back home. We actually ended up staying in this cafe for a while. We ended up meeting the owner of the place. He's such a lovely guy. He was just telling us everything about his life. It was really interesting, but we didn't film anything because sometimes it's a bit awkward <laughs> just put the camera in someone's face when they start talking to you. So uh, we brought some cakes with us from this cafe and let's have some tea. It's almost like you magic it into existence. Cheers. So one of the cakes we got was Medavik, which is honey cake, but this is with cherries and this is like the most interesting Medavik I've ever seen. It's got like chocolate on top. It's chocolate, yeah. Looks amazing. Do you want the first bite? Oh, it's so soft. Yeah. Is that good? Or is it good? <laughs> You're not gonna like it. <laughs> it's really unusual. Mm, that is lovely. It's amazing, right? Mmm. So many different flavours in mm. there, aren't they? The chocolate on top's really, really nice, isn't it? And we also got a... Um... It's basically like a chocolate salami, it's called. It's like crushed biscuits mixed with uh, butter and cocoa powder all blended in together and then put into a sausage shape and uh, left in the fridge or freezer. And then chopped up. You've tried this before? 
paljon. Paljon. Oskar. Os vart som vi det säger jag tänk. Men tang still fizzing in the last one. Mm. Goodbye. Cheers. So the next morning, after checking out of our apartment and with a couple of hours to spare, we bought some of the old plastic commemorative coins before heading to the post office to send the postcards to our Patreons. After that we moved on to the Green Market, which is the main one in the country, had a quick look around and lastly before heading to the bus station we explored a local sheriff's supermarket and discovered despite what we'd read the shelves are actually stocked with food and drink from all over the world, including some of the large Western brands. And after leaving the supermarket, he was on to the bus station, where we we're going to buy a ticket back to Moldova. А можно в Лейзе платить его? Сколько? 158. 158. Давайте 40 обратно и все. Угу. Да ничего страшного. Просто 2 рубля вам точно не надо. А, -а, -а спасибо. Да, да, да. 0,14. Все, спасибо большое. Pulling away from Tiraspol, we reflected on a bit of a whirlwind 48 hours and the people we'd met here in Transnistria. To be honest, most were quite shy on camera, but without it, were honestly some of the most welcoming people we've met. Yes, the politics, the Soviet nostalgia and the symbols were all fascinating, but it was the kindness of the locals that will stick with us from this particular trip. On that note, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one!